Hey all here OS Reviews, today we're taking a closer look at the Realme Buds Q. These are budget TWS wireless buds that sell for under 30 bucks, making them a rival to the popular Xiaomi Redmi AirDots, which are in roughly the same price bracket, although the Redmi's, since they've been on the market for longer, can sometimes be found for cheaper these days, but the Realme's do have a few more interesting features, including support for a companion app that allows you to further tweak what the controls can do, along with a low latency gaming mode that's great for playing action-packed games without noticing any delay between the two sides and your phone, and also a design, which they claim they've collaborated with a designer called Jose Levy, a famous industrial designer that makes these look a bit more stylish stylish than the rival. They have a very symmetrical and round design to them. They are touch sensitive in terms of the keys and have these bright yellow orange accents. Now if you're not familiar, Realme is under the same parent company that also makes smartphones branded as Oppo or OPPO. Realme is their cheaper sub-brand just like Redmi is Xiaomi's sub-brand and it caters for a more cost-conscious crowd. Otherwise, in terms of the battery life and endurance, they can last for up to 20 hours with the battery case combined. That is a little on the shorter side. It's comparable to the Redmi AirDots and the Apple AirPods, the originals, but there is definitely more competition these days which have more endurance, so that is something to keep in mind. And again, it reiterates the low latency. They have 10 millimeter dynamic drivers, which are larger than the 7.2 millimeter driver found on the Redmi AirDots, and they use the latest Bluetooth 5.0 for connectivity, offering support for codecs like SBC and AAC. They're also rated to be IPX4 water resistant, so you can splash some water, you can get these wet in the rain or sweat, and they should still survive, and otherwise comes in a few different colors including what's called quite yellow, very vibrant, as well as the traditional black. They are ultra lightweight, claiming to be less than 3.6 grams for each of the buds, as you can see there, so they should be quite comfortable as well. Now if you remove the buds from the case, they will last for around 4.5 hours to 5 hours, uh, which is still decent I'd say, and again with the battery case combined you get 20 hours. Inside we have just the buds themselves, and there's also a sticker that tells you how to pair these for the first time. It's actually long holding for 5 seconds on each of the two sides uh, before removing them from the casing. Aside from the buds themselves, we have some spare silicon tips to get a more custom fit, and again they have these bright yellow accents going on that shows a bit more of attention to detail compared to the 100% black silicon tips we see on most other pairs of buds. There's also the charging cable, which is unfortunately using micro USB, just like the Redmi AirDots. At this price point, it's still okay, but really these days I would like to see them migrate to USB Type-C, but again, it is what it is. There's also a quick start guide in here that also has the QR code in terms of downloading the companion app. Now taking a closer look at these, as aforementioned, it has a perfectly round cobblestone inspired design. So that is a contrast to the harder, sharper edges on the Redmi AirDots, although the dimensions of the cases are both quite similar as well as their weight and plastic construction are also comparable as well also using the same charging port as you can see there. Here they are next to the more expensive Apple AirPods and it's also not too far off overall. They can still slide easily into a pocket when you are on the road. There's just the Realme logo embedded onto the top here and then that is pretty much it. The door here is held into place magnetically so it has a satisfying click when you open and close it and otherwise on the inside there's a bit of branding info and we have just the buds which are also magnetically held into place so they don't fall loose even if you give it a bit of a shake. They do have a very clean and simple design with the right and left size labeled, and this part here is touch sensitive. It is quite responsive in my testing and it was able to register my taps without any issues. And I do prefer this slightly to the Redmi AirDot, which uses physical buttons that you have to press down on, and that requires a bit more of pressure and sometimes feels like you're jamming these further into your ears because of this physical key. So I do prefer these touch controls. We've got just a microphone towards the bottom that is pointing a little closer to your mouth, although obviously these don't have a stem, so they are still a bit further away. And then we have just on the back the charging contacts, we have just the uh, tip here, again the accent on the inside here is yellow, and has a fairly ergonomic shape that fits pretty comfortably when I was wearing these, at least for the 4 hour duration, I didn't find them to be uncomfortable or adding too much stress. 
Before we talk about the audio quality and the performance, I want to briefly show you guys the companion app here. It's pretty simple and straightforward, and it's the same app used to connect to all of their devices. For the first time, you can tap on the plus key here basically to uh, connect to other products, and it will tell you to turn on location services to search for devices nearby, including their smartwatches and bands like the Realme Band, and also audio products like the Buds Q and other TWS wearables as well can all be found and tapped on to be connected. In our case, we've already connected ourselves to the Buds Q, so it's showing up here and telling us the battery percentage at the left and right sides. We can also manually enter the low latency gaming mode, although you can also use that by long holding on the Buds themselves. And you can also customize what the taps will do for the left and the right sides independent of each other. So for instance, double tapping, triple tapping and touch and hold can all trigger different functions including skipping tracks, the voice assistant, and whatnot. Although one feature that is missing on the capabilities here is to adjust the volume higher or lower. If you want to raise the volume you have to turn over to your phone unfortunately or use the voice assistant. And that is more or less it as far as what the app can do at the moment. You can't change the EQ directly from it although you can also use third-party EQ apps to further tweak the sound profile if you prefer for Moving into audio quality and performance next, overall the Realme Buds Q don't disappoint. The larger driver is mostly in the form of packing a bit more bass in the lower frequencies, so if you are a bass head, these will be pretty enjoyable. You can feel the thump of a drum beat of a guitar string being plucked and does feel quite satisfying. In fact, it's turned up a notch, I would say, compared to the Redmi AirDots and also even the Apple AirPods, and that is great. The mids also sound quite good, and trebles also sound clean without too much distortion. You won't really hear any hissing or humming, nothing like that in the background. They are very clean. Although, if we're being super nitpicky, they're still not going to be, say, audiophile grade compared to more expensive headphones that has a bit more separation and tighter detail in the trebles. So in higher frequency, maybe they can have a touch more detail, but overall, they're definitely not shabby, and I would say they have a slightly more preferable sound, in my opinion, than the standard Redmi AirDots, just by having a bit more bass. They work really well for pop music, for rock music, EDM, and also for gaming. They just make things almost come to life as there's a bit of kick, as well as even using for watching movies. Whether it's Netflix or YouTube, you really won't find too much delay between the video and the audio. Everything is still enjoyable, which is impressive at this low price range, I'd say. Last but not least, the call quality using the built-in microphones is merely average. In fact, it's probably the uh, least impressive out of the package here. In fact, it's a bit mediocre just because the microphone is so far away from your mouth. It's always going to be a bit difficult, especially if you're in a noisier environment. It doesn't have as much active noise cancellation functions built on in. So if you are indoors, it will still work fine. But if you want something that's primarily used for making calls or conferences, there are going to be some better options available. But again, if you need something primarily for listening to music and for gaming, watching videos, I think these will definitely fit the bill. It's a reminder of how impressive wireless buds have gotten, and now you don't really have to spend much money at all to get something that works quite well in terms of music listening and even watching videos with minimal delay. Sure, the battery life could be a little bit longer, and it's best to have, say, a Type-C port for charging, but again, for sub-$30, it is kind of hard to complain, and it does pack a relatively clean-looking design, again, thanks to a collaboration with a renowned industrial designer for the Buds Q. So you can check out more details if you're interested in the links down below. A solid pair of affordable Buds overall from Realme, 